Hello and welcome to another standard video. Today we're finally taking a look at blue white birds, which is probably an underappreciated archetype in standard at the moment. One of the main payoffs for the archetype is Salvation Swan, a 4 mana 3 3 flyer with flash, so we can play during the opponent's turn as well. And whenever Salvation Swan or another bird we control enters, we get to exile up to one target creature we control without flying and return it to the battlefield under its owner's control with a flying counter on it at the beginning of the next end step. So Salvation Swan's a very interesting build around because you want to play it in a deck that might have some additional birds so you can trigger the Swan's ability, but you also need to have enough non-flying creatures to flicker in the first place since the Swan only targets creatures without flying. And the creatures we want to flicker in this deck include Ether Channeler, which is a 2-1 when it enters, can either make a 1-1 flying bird token, can return another non-land permanent to its owner's hand, or can draw a card. So you can see the synergy already. If we play Channeler with a Salvation Swan on the battlefield, we can make a bird token. The bird token will trigger the Salvation Swan's ability, which allows us to flicker the Ether Channeler, which will now re-enter with a flying counter on it, and we can once again choose one of the three abilities. So this is one of the core synergies I'm trying to build around. And then we also have the Sanguine Evangelist, which is decent to flicker with Salvation Swan, making an additional 1-1 bat token. And then the bat tokens still synergize with our Valley Quest Caller, a 2-3, giving other rabbits, bats, birds, and mice we control plus 1 plus 1. And whenever one of those creatures enters, we also get to scry one. So additional card selection is also welcome. So this will pump up our bats, our birds, and other copies of Valley Quest Caller. So this is kind of the card that ties everything together. And then a flickering of Valley Quest Scholar with Salvation Swan can also save it from removal, as the name implies, and then we'll be left with a flying Quest Scholar. And then Quest Scholar is also excellent to copy with a Mockingbird. This can be a copy of any creature that's already on the battlefield if we pay enough mana for it. Can also play it just as a 1 1 flyer, but usually we're waiting to copy one of our three drops like Ether Channeler or Sanguine Evangelist. But if we can start with a Quest Caller and copy that instead, that's also great because now we get multiple Quest Callers all giving our team plus 1 plus 1 and scrying when creatures enter. So this is also a pretty nifty combo. And then rounding out the deck, we have one copy of Castrol, a 4-5 legendary bird with flying, saying whenever one or more birds we control deal a combat damage to a player, we can either put a bird creature card from our hand or graveyard onto the battlefield with a finality counter on it, so we're often trying to reanimate our birds at that point. can also put a plus one plus one counter on each bird we control, or simply draw a card. So some pretty useful abilities, especially powerful if we get to reanimate a Salvation Swan with an Evangelist or Channeler on the battlefield that doesn't already have a flying counter, so we get to flicker those and accumulate even more value. So that's kind of where we're trying to go with Castrol. And then rounding out the deck, we have another bird with Avon Interrupter, a 2-2 flyer. When it enters, we can exile a spell that's on the stack. It becomes plotted, and spells your opponents cast from graveyards or from exile cost two mana more to cast, so that plotted spell will be more expensive. Also good against other cards with a plot mechanic, thinking of the Slick Shot Show Off, as it can now maybe be too more expensive to deploy after the opponent already spent two mana putting it in exile. And the Interrupter's also at its best when facing opposing counter spells, because if you plot an opposing counter spell, the opponent won't be able to play it at instant speed, so it's pretty much useless. And then we also have the Soul Partition to synergize with our Avon Interrupter as an all-purpose removal spell. can also target our own stuff to maybe save them from removal, but if we target opposing permanents, then they will be two more expensive to redeploy. And with an Avon Interrupter, it's going to be two more mana, so that can also get out of hand. And Mockingbird could also maybe copy the Interrupter, even if we're not countering anything, just to tax the opponent even more. And then we've got Elspeth's Smite, mainly against the red aggro decks as cheap removal. And then No More Lies as another decent counter spell for blue-white. And then the mana base has a very important creature land. A Restless Anchorage is actually a bird, so it will get pumped by our Valley Quest Caller and potentially synergize with our other creatures and can be a great way to close out games, especially with multiple Quest Callers on the battlefield pumping them up. And uh, the map tokens will give us a bit more card selection or card advantage. And then we've got your typical blue-eyed dual lands. And then a couple villages for additional utility. 
the lily pan village to surveil to if a bird may be entered under our control and then the lupin flower village we can sacrifice to hopefully find an additional bird can also find our valley quest caller as a rabbit but uh, it's not going to find our evangelist or channeler so the hit rate isn't incredibly high and we still need enough white sources to cast our early elspeth's smite so just to one village the lily pan village also doesn't help cast no more lies but otherwise we just need blue mana to cast our creature spells for the most part and then i guess we also need some additional blue sources to activate our arrestless anchorage so we don't want to go overboard with a lily pad village either so yeah that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does okay we're on the play our hand seems keepable got the smite against aggro and then a couple evangelists can start going wide opponent red black is it uh, aggro variants hired claw so lizards okay happy to smite the hired claw here Although it will still trigger to enable potential synergies. Could have maybe waited for it to damage us in case they wanted to spend their mana giving it a plus one counter. But yeah, Flame Cash Gecko is next and they got to make two mana since they got to deal one damage. Enough for a Rot Caller. So we're already starting to fall behind on board. Channeler could bounce a creature. A rot caller can start draining us. Still tempted to play an evangelist here and maybe bounce something more expensive later. And if evangelist needs to trade for a gecko, it's not the end of the world. Quest caller can grow all the bats. That point's got the fire glass mentor. Can actually double block the rot caller as well. They only get to take out one of my two creatures. And then Mentor's hoping to find a land with the ability that they can still play. Or maybe a 1-drop if they have land in hand. They did find a Hired Claw. And they can still cast it. So they got that value. Alright, so now might be a good turn for Quest Caller. Keep up my counter spell. Do have to tap very carefully. And then keep the bats back on defense. Opponent does have a Cavern of Souls, however, but they might try to use a removal spell instead. Alright, just a Gecko attacking. Can block with a Quest Caller, maybe bait out a Burn spell. Opponent did find a Go for the Throat, as it turns out. And they have to cast it now, so we get to counter it. Alright, so not a terrible turn, all things considered. But our opponent's got another land to level up the Hired Claw. Salvation Swan is quite interesting. So could play that to maybe protect a Quest Caller. Or I could play Evangelist to flicker that to make more bats. Which I think is reasonable. So play Evangelist first. We get to Scry. Mockingbird isn't bad either. Can play it for two mana to copy a quest caller, or one mana to copy an opposing lizard, perhaps. But yeah, the plan now is Salvation Swan, Flicker Evangelist, and then if I play Channeler making a bird, it will trigger the swan once again, or I guess Mockingbird would do it too. Opponent's going with a Valley Flame Caller, so we have options. Can now also play Ether Channeler first to bounce the Valley Flame Caller, for instance. If I were to attack all out, I am attacking for 9 in the air. If I Mockingbird Quest Caller, then that's 3 more damage. So, yeah, we've got some uh, decent options available. I guess best case scenario would be Channeler draws into a land. I play Mockingbird copying Quest Caller. Flame Caller only affects Mouse, Otter, Raccoon and Lizard creatures, so not birds. Yeah, I think it's a good turn for Salvation Swan, so I guess what we can do is attack including with the Evangelists, just to get the battle cry, and then Salvation Swan can flicker the Evangelist, which will give us another bat as well. So we should have ample blockers, and then next turn we can make some fun plays with Salvation Swan if it's still around. 
Quest Caller I'll keep, so next turn I could play Quest Caller and copy one with Mockingbird, which should be enough to cross the finish line. But let's see what our opponent can come up with. They're gonna scoop it up. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our mana doesn't quite cooperate here. If I did have blue mana, this probably would have been a keep, as we can curve no more lives into Channeler, maybe copy it with a Mockingbird. As is, it's a little risky. Right, this I can keep. Castrol has to go. And we are up against the red aggro. Swiss Spear can be tricky to smite at times if our opponent uh, can enable prowess enough times. So we'll have to think twice about using it. So no smites. Opponent loves damage happen, plays Heartfire Hero. This is a better creature to potentially smite. Same with a uh, Scamp. These are both of the cards we kind of have in mind when putting Smite in the deck. Alright, so hopefully opponent blinks first. Monstrous Rage. So Valiant has already been triggered, cannot trigger a second time. So that works. Does our opponent have another pump spell they want to try? They do not. Now whatever creature I play could still die to this camp once it gets sacrificed. We did actually draw another smite. Although it is going to be much more mana efficient to play smite next turn alongside another 3-drop. So for now we could play Channeler and draw a card. Or Evangelist making a bat. I kind of prefer Channeler draw, since if I play Evangelist make a bat, it kind of trades twice for this camp in a way. Could also bounce this camp, but... I think I prefer the card here. And then... Could block this camp, could maybe wait until next turn to keep up Smite. That point's gonna just shock it, that's fine too. And I think I'm okay just going for Evangelist now. Could also keep up the Avon Interrupter. So we don't run into any awkwardness if our opponent main face sacrifices the scamp somehow. Sure. Alright, that worked. Playing Interrupter to try and ambush Swiss Spear probably would not have worked out. And our opponent is hanging on to a bunch of cards here, so... Maybe they're just waiting for the perfect setup to take us out with Burn Together. But we did draw no more lives in the meantime. Alright, Demonic Ruckus. I could Soul Partition the Swiss Spear in response so they don't get to draw. And then Mockingbird copying Evangelist is pretty good value. Can attack first, but yeah, opponent already scoops it up. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We have a keepable hand. Some interaction on two. More interaction or card draw on three. And Channeler is good to have in play in case we can flicker it later. Alright, play Quest Caller. Might be up against a blue counterspell deck, which could already bounce Quest Caller here. That's fine. We're not playing Cavern of Souls, since at the end of the day we only have a handful of birds and a lot of non-birds as well. Opponent seems to be blue-white after all, maybe a Monastery Mentor type of deck. So we could keep up Avon Interrupter. I think I'm fine just going Channel or Draw Card. If they want to counter this, that's fine too. Want to keep hitting my land drops. Opponent's going to deduce... So, more likely to be a pure control deck. Which is going to be a tough matchup. I see Builder's Talent, so might be trying to return things from the graveyard as well. For now, Channeler could bounce the wall. Salvation Swan's good, especially with more birds coming up. But uh, yeah, can only do one thing here. Could also go once again with Channeler Draw Card to try and hit my land drop. And then next turn, Swan Flickering Channeler can set off kind of a chain of birds flickering more things.
All right. Could attack and bluff a card like uh, Elspeth Smite, I suppose. But it's going to be more meaningful if we attack in a future turn. Okay, so opponent keeps up four mana. I can attack. And our opponent's going to deduce. So I can let that happen. Opponent would get a plus one counter. A few ways we can deal with this. Just soul partitioning the wall is one of them. If I go for Salvation Swan and they counter it, I'll be pretty sad. So, yeah, let's be patient for now. And then I can fight over a counterspell with my own. So not gonna tap out for Quest Caller, so our opponent's gonna know something's up. And nothing to return with the Builder's Talent. Now let's attack again. Would have been perfect if we had an extra mana for No More Lies as protection for the Swan play. But I guess with two we can try a second time if it doesn't work. And ideally our opponent makes the first move and we can respond accordingly. They can still sack their clue to draw. They're going to deduce. So now if they go and sack their clue, I think I flash in the swan. And I hope they don't have another Flood Maw in hand. Does not seem to be the case. So flicker that. Opponent does get free rain next turn. Chandler is only going to return at the uh, beginning of the opponent's end step. So if they remove the swan, which they did, I don't get the uh, insane value of making more birds. But we can still draw here. And I get lost, we'll deal with Channeler. Okay, opponent stepped out again. And can now deploy a quest caller. Keep up my instant speed interaction, can also sack a clue. So I have a few things we can do here. Another builder's talent making a wall. It's not a disaster. Swan can only flicker my own creatures. And then end of turn we can sack a clue. Making sure to keep up no more lies. Evangelist is a good one. Can start flying over. Plays well with the Salvation Swan. So we'll try that. Probably should have tapped some of my villages in case I want to both partition and no more lies. Alright, opponent's gonna attempt to counter here. Using the interrupters, good value, since that will strand their counter spell in exile where they can't really use it. Although we are vulnerable to a Sweeper, I'll keep Evangelist on top. And then probably no point in sacking the map if we expect another board wipe. So yeah, Plotted counter spell cannot really be cast since you can only cast those as a sorcery. And yeah, Sunfall's extra painful since we don't get that additional bat token now. And then our opponent also gets a pretty big incubator. Alright, time to rebuild once again. Quest Caller into Evangelists. Keep up, no more lies. And then another Anchorage. Doesn't seem like the type of card I need. Although with our opponent at 11, any flying creature is pretty relevant here. So we'll keep up our counter spell. Opponent's gonna just sack a clue to draw. Can also soul partition our own creatures to save them from another sweeper. 
but we'll see here. The juice makes another token. No value from the builder's talent, at least. So they're just kind of cycling through their deck. And another builder's talent would make a wall. Yeah, maybe with our opponent low enough here, it's time to put the pedal to the metal, counter it. Opponent will keep up mana to animate the incubator, which we can soul partition. And then animating anchorage applies even more pressure. So with a battle cry, we might get there. All right, and our opponent explodes. Yeah, they figured out that uh, indeed plotting an opposing counterspell is the best solution since it's going to just be stuck in exile for the rest of the game. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a decent hand. Lots of early interaction. So especially good against a red deck. Put on blue-black instead. So it may not be the best matchup for Elspeth's Smite. But still have our counter spell available. Channeler can draw. And a Whale of the Forgotten. That's fine, not gonna fight over it. And Deep Cavern Bat hits the graveyard. Yeah, I'll play a Channeler to draw, get something on the board. And then next turn we can keep up our interaction. Opponent with an Invasion can discard my Smite. Opponent is filling their own graveyard as well. We see Hidetsugo and Kairi, so it might be more of a combo deck. And we also see the uh, Render Inert to transform their battle at once. Now I can still play Quest Caller and keep up No More Lies. And now a Scholar. Yeah, I think that's worth countering just to be mana efficient. Keep up the pressure. And now I'll have to decide between Interrupter or Evangelist. Evangelist would let me scry. Yeah, I think I'll go for Evangelist still. And then hope they can't do anything too devastating next turn. And then we can keep up the Interrupter as a counterspell. Don't think we had enough going on in play to necessarily just rely on the Interrupter to get there. But our opponent does have the Render Inert, so they get to transform their battle. And copy Hidatsugo and Kairi, probably. So it's something we wanted to avoid. Now at least with Smite we can make it so we exile it, so it doesn't trigger the death ability. And get to untap, just a land, so yeah, we're not gonna get there here. I'll attack all out. Bottom blocks quest caller. I'll go full control. One's got a bitter triumph for the bat token as well. Could cast Interrupter and still scry and get three more damage in. Yeah, that's probably fine. And bottom of land once again. And then now we can smite right away. No need to wait until after damage. Our opponent's at 6, we're dead to a sweeper, pretty much. Another invasion, could have been a reason to still play out my land. But uh, outside of Mockingbird, we don't really have a reason to keep playing lands out. So our opponent can cast a 2-mana Bitter Triumph, discarding a card. Maybe waiting for us to go to attackers and then take out Evangelist. And we do see push-pull, so that's definitely part of the... Hidetsugo and Kairi combo, and wow, opponent explodes, so I guess they did not have the removal they needed here. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is probably keepable. Do need a few more lands. We'll see if uh, Castrel is going to be worth it. It is pretty good with Salvation Swan, to be fair. For now, probably fine to tap out for Quest Caller. Hope they don't have cut down. They do not. 
And then a white source for Interrupter would be lovely. Bodon does have the Virtue of Persistence, however. Right, at least we can cast our Interrupter now. And send this Liliana packing. The land is perfect, starts pressuring the opponents while keeping up more interaction. Don't have anything that's great to flicker with Salvation Swan at the moment. That's a drawback of playing the bird archetype, is you want some birds, but not too many. And Annoyance will get rid of our bird. Okay, so could get in with Anchorage, which is reasonable since we have Partition to maybe catch a shield that resolves, but uh, I'm just going to pass. And I don't think I want to play Swan without anything to flicker, although could have maybe set up Kostral. Uh, let's just pass again. Alright, that's uh, easy. No more lies, as it will also exile it. So we don't have to worry about it coming back. Now, as the game goes on, our opponent's getting closer to casting their Virtue of Persistence as well. Which is a bit of a concern. Could play Kostral. Although it's going to be better if we can immediately connect with a bird. So maybe I do go for end of turn Salvation Swan without value. Opponent can now cast Virtue, but decides to keep a mana instead. So if I play the Swan, it's going to get removed, pretty much. But then I can maybe keep Kostral in play. Yeah, this is where having some random 2-mana 1-1 one, one that draws a card when it enters would be great to flicker. But a Spirited Companion rotated out, we will get a new 2-mana 1-1 one, one in white that draws with uh, Foundations coming out in November, I believe. And then do we try Kostral? If they're sitting on removal, they can just wait to remove Kostral itself. Yeah, I mean, I could still try it, or I could wait until I have an extra land for Soul Partition so I can save it from removal. And then for now get in with Anchorage. Alright, opponent's gonna go for the throw to Anchorage instead. So now the play of saving Kostral is not gonna work. But they're less likely to have removal for it in the first place. And our opponent's gonna also bitter triumph the Swan. Yeah, I think we'll let that slide, keep Soul Partition for Virtue. Now I guess they can cast the removal half first for 4 mana, so they don't necessarily have to wait until they have 9 mana. But uh, yeah, time for Kostral, hope they don't have an answer left. And then we can get back our creatures from Graveyard as well. One's gonna shrink it down and they may have drawn some other answer cut down maybe, or they just wanted to get the discount. Alright, so we get to finally attack with Kastral. Our opponent actually had the mana to just cast Virtue last turn, so that's a bit surprising. And then returning a bird is probably better than just drawing a card here. Although, once again, nothing to flicker. Opponent just activates Mirex. So now we can just counter the Virtue for good. And our opponent scoops it up, so yeah, next turn we get to start drawing with Kostral, and just two turns of attacking in the air will close out the game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hands pretty reasonable. Do need to draw a few more lands, I suppose. And there's nothing too exciting to copy with the Mockingbird, as is. But uh, at least we've got the early interaction covered. Somewhat reasonable to play this just as a 1-1 flyer, since it will eventually synergize with Castrol as well. But uh, copying a channeler would be a bit more exciting, for instance. Put on Black Green, Deep Cavern Bats. May as well counter. And hope for a third land. That's not it. 
All right, so stuck on two is not ideal. At least they didn't get to see our hand, so they don't know about Elspeth's Might yet, which is a pretty situational card that's sometimes easier to play around if you know it. And Pillage the Bog implies that they're on the Innkeeper's Talent build. So our opponent's going to try and combo kill us. At least we have decent answers to the opponent uh, comboing off. Now another bat. Do I soul partition it? Now let's let them take it if they want to. Take the soul partition. At least the bat can't really attack into the smite. And now Mockingbird can also copy the Deep Cavern Band for what it's worth. Alright, opponent seems to have some uh, other graveyard synergies, so may not be the Innkeeper's Talon deck necessarily. Alright, found our third land. So yeah, Mockingbird to return the favor is not a bad idea. And then I still get to keep up Elspeth's Mind for what it's worth. And we see Cutdown, which is worth taking. So our opponent's probably on an Insidious Roots deck instead. And Pillage the Bog's gonna try and look for it. It's gonna be a Tyvar, also part of that deck. Can start returning creatures, including a Deep Cavern Bat. Better opponent just plussing Tyvar. Okay, so a couple ways we can do this. Yeah, I think attacking is fine for now. The main card we want to stop is an opposing Insidious Roots, so we'll keep up the Interrupter. But now minusing. Can get back the Deep Cavern Bats to maybe take the Interrupter. Then we still have Salvation Swan as something we can flash in. So one unknown in hand and a Maverick. Nothing for me to flicker. But now if I play Channeler making a bird, I can flicker the Channeler with a bird using the Swan's ability. And we can attack Tyvar. Bono lets it go. So make a bird. Flicker channeler. And now... Probably just draw a card. And we can do that a few more times. Bono did find the Insidious Roots. But now without Tyvar, they're less likely to just combo off. Bodon says no to a cash grab. And we found a soul partition, also an answer to the roots. So attack all out. Bodon takes it. And do I need to keep up soul partition? I think we just run back the channel or play. Pretty nice to have your entire team have flying. Opponent still knows about smites, so they're not going to want to attack, although they did find a Tyvar now. So yeah, we could be in trouble. So opponent gets back a creature, triggers Gorehound, triggers Roots. Their tokens can immediately tap for mana. And they're looking to fill the graveyards to find more creatures like Maverick that they can activate out of the graveyard. And a Thrill Seeker. Alright, is there some combo here that kills me on the spot? I guess I can sack Maverick, take out my Swan, and then get Maverick back from the graveyard, triggering the roots. Not quite an infinite combo, but it will trigger Gorehound again. Alright, never mind, our opponent packs it in. We have a pretty full grip here, should be able to finish off Tyvar. And uh, Quest Caller pumping the team is also going to be huge. On to the next one.
Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems fine. The plan is copy quest caller with Mockingbird as soon as possible. Can be pretty nice in multiples. And then they'll have flying in addition to pumping each other. So just need our quest caller to survive for a few turns. Opponent is on the red aggro. Yeah, I mean, if we can make enough quest callers, our team's going to be pretty big. If our opponent immediately has a lightning strike, we're going to be sad. As we draw another Mockingbird. Alright, Heartfire Hero is acceptable. And a Scamp, so our opponent's setting up. And, uh, yeah, don't have many options. We also get to Scry, at least. Keep a land on top. And I don't think I'm in a position to attack. Although I'm also not really in a position where I want to block. Because we need our quest callers to survive so we can get more copies in play. Slick Shots doesn't have the best attack, so that's fine. And I think another Mockingbird is better than anything else we can do here. And land on top is fine. Okay. Could still play a 1-1 Mockingbird just to get an extra creature on the board, even if it's not another quest caller. Yeah, that's not unreasonable. Do I want to attack with these as well? Maybe not a terrible idea. And then we'll copy this camp. I think that's better than Heartfire Hero. They both deal damage when they die. But I'm not going to target my creature for Valiant, whereas I might sacrifice my creature after hitting the opponent. I could be pickier, but Land 4 does enable Salvation Swan, which can flicker the Quest Caller as well. So I think that's good enough, since it also synergizes with Channeler. So yeah, the Mockingbird Quest Caller special. We'll see how this one ends up. Of course, the red deck can kill out of nowhere with a Callous Cell Sword. And our opponent's going for it. So, assuming they have a Monstrous Rage in hand, which is kind of a safe assumption, I can still set up an okay block here, at the very least with a Cacophony Scamp. Quest Caller could also get involved. So, if they've already triggered Valiance. If they Monstrous Rage again, we would still trade, although they would deal 7 on the way out. So we don't want to encourage them to pump Heartfire Hero or Scamp necessarily. Blocking Slick Shots doesn't force them to pump the Slick Shot itself, whereas blocking Swiss Spear does force them to play a pump spell here. If it's Monstrous Rage, it does go up to 5 toughness, but Scamp still dies killing something on the way out. And then can maybe block Scamp here. If our opponent Monstrous Rages and goes third land into Cell Sword, do I die? Seven times three, essentially. That would be lethal, but all right, our opponent scoops it up. Yeah, do have to be very careful here since any combination of Monstrous Rage into second main Kalos Cell Sword could take us out. But luckily for us, our opponent did not have those tools available and we get to rank up. So yeah, Mockingbird plus Quest Caller is a pretty sweet combo if you can get those in play early. And uh, yeah, overall this blue-eyed bird deck, maybe not the most competitive deck out there since it is sometimes a delicate house of cards and it only takes one or two removal spells for the opponent to have all your pieces come crumbling down. So it does feel a bit delicate, which I guess is fitting for a bird's deck. But when things line up, you get to interact at the right times and then disrupt the opponent while progressing your plan, eventually start flickering your creatures, giving everything flying. The deck can feel quite powerful, but it is not the epitome of consistency. Sometimes you'll draw a smite against control where it doesn't do anything. But I think that means it could make for a better best of three deck where you get to board out your Elspeth smites and then potentially bring in additional counter spells for matchups where you need them and then the overall bird theme plays quite well at instant speed as well so it's a good draw go style of deck but sometimes as we saw here with a quest caller you still have those more aggressive draws with mockingbird so it can potentially play both ways so the flexibility of the deck is nice so even though it doesn't always do the exact same thing every game the overall
overall power is there to at least bring you to a victory. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day.